the first word I think of when I think of the Tom and Gail Benson Cancer Center is empathy. Um, the second word is compassion. Um, I wasn't fortunate enough to know Mr. Benson, but I've gotten to know Mrs. Benson quite well. The love and compassion sh that she feels for other human beings is amazing. Um, and it's really overwhelming what she's done for this community. Um, the Cancer Center is just one of many places that she's making that impact. I'm truly grateful to get to be part of that. So in 2006, I was diagnosed for the first time. At that time, it had not spread. Um, I found out on a Monday and on a Thursday had surgery to remove it. And fortunately, because there had been no spread, I didn't need any additional treatment. Um, honestly, it didn't set me back very much at all at that point. In 2011, when I went for my five-year follow-up, which was supposed to be the all clear, uh, they found that I had cancer again. And unfortunately, at, the, at that point, they found that it had spread as well. Um, so in May of 2011, I had uh, surgery to remove cancer. And in later that same month, um, the same day of the NBA draft lottery in 2011, uh, the day that we won the lottery to draft Kyrie Irving, after a nine-week course of, of chemotherapy, um, it was mid-July of 2011, I was uh, theoretically cancer-free and started a course of every six-month scans um, that then went to every year, then went to every couple years, and, and now I'm at the point where I, I don't go through scans on a regular basis. Um, but what I learned during that period of time will stick with me forever, un unquestionably. The second time that we heard that I had cancer and that it had spread, that really spawned a whole different level of conversation between Meredith and I. Um, I was really blessed I married my best friend. Um, I married somebody who was much tougher than I am. And when we went through that process together, um, you learn a lot about yourself and you learn that an awful lot of what we do is building a facade to make people think you're tough enough. But when you're faced with something like this, you realize what you're really not. And I think the most indelible thing for me out of all of that was being around other kids and other people that were dealing with much more severe and aggressive forms of cancer than I was, recognizing how much tougher they were than I was, how much people went through. Honestly, when I was found out that I was, quote, cancer free, um, I was a little bit embarrassed, to be honest with you, that I even considered myself a cancer survivor because everything that those people go through that I saw going through it on a daily basis when I was getting my treatment um, made me realize how blessed I truly was. And I had an overwhelming sense of gratitude. The courage it takes to look people in the eye that are fearful every day and to keep showing up and to be positive and to be a, a source of light and courage to another person, that's truly divine. That's channeling something spiritually that I don't think very many people find. The nurse that um, got me through the first week, um, somebody who became very, very important to us and uh, actually became good friends of ours. And, and the gratitude I have every day, um, to Susan Bond and people like her is immeasurable. And that's really what this whole thing is about. What we're trying to do is to eradicate a disease that's relentless. But in so doing, we're also going to make the lives of all of the caregivers so much better because they get to move into an area where they're delivering joyful news and sometimes not very painful news. And their courage in delivering painful news is what gets us through it. And their presence when we receive joyful news, it was what makes it even more special. So what excites me the most about getting to be part of this situation is that we're going to try to help bring joy to an awful lot of people. So when you're named a, a miracle maker, um, the first question you have to ask yourself is, why me? Um, frankly, the same guilt I felt when I was uh, declared cancer free is something I felt when I was made aware of the fact that I was going to be a miracle maker. Uh, I'm not a miracle maker. I'm a really lucky person that was, had the exact right form of cancer. What I'd like to do is become a miracle maker, and I would like all of us to contribute enough 
to this cause and to put enough of our life, like our actual energies and efforts in making a difference. And if we can do that, then we have a chance to be a miracle maker. But truthfully, all I felt when I found that out was we have a lot of responsibility right now.